Hello and welcome back to X School Ghana Blog and Photography. I'm Steven, and for today I have a very highly anticipated figure review. But before we move on to this figure, a quick mention about the giveaway the contest I organized last month. Yes, that contest is over, and I know the results have not been announced yet. But I have not forgotten about it yet, so don't worry about that. The results will be out shortly soon after I'm done reviewing this figure today. So, to keep in check with this YouTube channel or perhaps my Facebook page and my Twitter, I will announce it everywhere. My Instagram too. Now back to this review today. I received this figure almost two weeks ago, but it took me some time to prepare for this review because. Yeah, there were quite a number of things to discuss about. Today's review is a bit more detailed than my usual, and I was gathering information from other people, my other friends who also acquired and bought a copy of this figure. This is a one by seven scale figure of Glee from Genshin Impact, a highly viral and popular mobile game, PC game at the moment, made by Apex Toys and MiHoYo themselves. If you're wondering why I'm having this figure this early in September 2021, when AmiAmi.com mentioned in their product page that she will be out in late November or early December, that is because Chinese figure companies, well, especially Apex, they have a tendency to release their figures earlier than the announced release date, but only exclusive to the China market. The same thing applied to. Paimon, in fact, that was way back last year, I think. Yes, the same thing. They released her earlier before the international market, and they are repeating the same thing with Glee. According to MiHoYo in the official Taobao site, this first batch is limited to only fifteen thousand copies, and once sold out, you will have to wait for the second batch, which is the international release batch. Is buying a figure is getting a figure earlier than usual supposed to be a good thing? While most people may assume that to be the case, that is not really true with Glee right here. In my opinion, they should have stuck to the international release date instead of pushing out an early batch in September. And I will explain why in a moment. But before that, let's have a quick look at her box. This is what her box looks like. Fairly good quality cardboard material, almost cuboid in shape, but nothing special. Despite the toughness of the box, the postman still managed to dent the box ever so slightly. But the figure was well protected, so yeah, nothing much special right here. But you do have a holographic sticker down here to prove the authenticity of it. Not that there is any bootleg versions of this figure, at least at the point of making this video. Okay, the first thing I noticed about this figure is how heavy it is when you lift the figure up, compared to good small or outer figures, even Kotobukiya figures. Kotobukiya stuff tend to be heavier than many other figure brands, and this is even heavier than that, which leads me to suspect this is not just a PVC figure, but resin is being used in making this figure. So you definitely do not want to be rough with this figure. Given there are so many fragile parts sticking out, and resin in general is more fragile, more brittle than PVC or ABS, it does feel like resin to me because I am familiar with 3D printing. I use them to make props for photography, and I work with resin as well. So this figure feels like resin to me, at least certain parts of it. That's one thing to take note. And yeah. Clay is permanently glued to her base. You cannot remove the figure. The only two separate parts are the extensions on the back of the figure, the flower parts and the bomb. Those are the only separate parts. I personally would have wished Apex separated the figure from the base and used some kind of magnetic solution where the figure sits on top of the base via a powerful magnet, which some figure companies do, but that will probably escalate the cost a lot. 
So I can see the logic in gluing the figure permanently to the base even though I'm not really a fan of it. I've complained about that in my Kotobukiya figure reviews, especially the recent Musashi review. Now down to the quality of this figure. Sculpt-wise, it is highly accurate. This figure looks exactly like the official artwork of Glee. So in terms of sculpt, there are zero problems. It is perfection itself. That is the best part about this figure. Her face, the sculpt, the body proportion, everything is spot on. And the paint job you are looking at with this figure is actually good small company level. Coming from a new company, a relatively new company, right? Like Apex, I can see the potential in their products being great products in future. The level of paint detail and shading, they are right up there with the better figure companies from Japan itself. But however, the downfall of this figure lies in the quality control. Now you see, the paint job might be fantastic, but there is something really going on with the quality control aspect of this figure, which I suspect might be related to the fact that they rushed out an early batch of 15,000 units of this figure for the exclusive market in China. This is why I mentioned earlier that being earlier than usual might not necessarily be a good thing. Now let me run through the flaws with this figure, especially on my copy. And I will go into more detail about additional copies I inspected, right? The first one is regarding the front of a barret over here. Yeah, you will see a very bright gold line, almost gold color line across the front of a barret. It is similar to a scratch, I would say, or even a paint transfer. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So that is the first one, the most obvious one. And then the second floor you will see is on the surface of the bomb she's sitting on over here, near the mouth of this bomb over here. If you shine it under a light source, you can see some kind of discoloration going on, as if someone touched the surface of the figure before the paint even dried. So you get a slight discoloration or a slight smudge mark over there. The last one is on the back of the figure. It is very obvious under lighting. There are a couple of bright marks or smudges on the red paint. Once again, as if someone or something touched the figure before the clear coating or the paint has dried. And this is why I did not really agree with Apex and Mihoyo releasing this figure earlier than usual. They should have kept to the late November or early December release date and not rush out these things so that the quality control is there. Is it just my own bad luck that I got a worse version of this figure while other people received a better version of this clay figure? The answer is most likely no because I surveyed other people who also bought a copy of this figure in order to make this comprehensive review. I checked out another two copies of this figure, which means there are three in total that I checked out. The first one is my Facebook friend, who had the same exact issues as mine, the bright scratch on the front of a barret, and also the paint smudge on the bomb. But in his case, it is so bad that he actually personally went and contacted Mihoyo, and Mihoyo actually agreed to do an exchange for him, to give him a new one. So. That is a good sign coming from Mihoyo in terms of customer service, but from what I'm aware of, this is only possible when you contact them in China directly, and that is for those who bought it on Taobao, so you go through the Taobao customer service. For international market, I don't really know if the customer support is even there in the first place, so this is one thing to bear in mind. The second person I checked with is Brian from Moenos. So feel free to check out his unboxing video as well. He is a friend of mine and his clear figure also has the same exact issues as mine. The scratch on the barrette, the smudge on the bomb, but in his case, it is a bit milder or less serious. So three figures with the same exact issues at the same exact spots. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. Every copy of this clay figure has this problem. 
The only thing differing between each copy is the severity of it. But this is limited to the first batch of this clay figure. Will it happen again in the second batch? I don't know either. So my current plan at the moment is to sell this figure to a friend of mine who still wants her anyway, regardless of the flaws present. And I might buy the second batch later in December and review her again to check out if the current problems has been fixed or not. If Apex does fix the problems in the second batch, then you guys in the international market who ordered from Ami Ami are the lucky ones actually. In addition to the three quality control issues, I also noticed one thing is that this stripe on the barrette over here, this gold color stripe, it is bleeding out to the side. So it feels like as if they did not apply the decal properly. So it went beyond the seam lines. But this problem is not unique to this figure or Apex in general. A lot of fat company figures have this problem with seam lines where any narrow or detailed parts the paint will bleed out to the sides. So this is another aspect where Apex can improve on. One last minor complaint is regarding how tight fitting those extra parts at the back of the figure fit into the holes. I did not dare to push in fully into the figure because I'm afraid I might break the backs. And if I were you, I would just leave it out from the figure, keep it in the box and display the figure the way it is. But if you plan on completing the figure the way it should be, be very patient about it and do not use excessive force or you might break the backs of those parts. And that is about it with the review of this figure. Initially, I wanted to do two separate videos when reviewing this figure, but since I'm going to review the second batch Klee figure later in December, there really is no point making three videos of the same figure. I think it is too much, which is why this one single review concludes everything with this Klee figure, at least for the first batch. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And as for whether you will get this figure, whether you should get this figure, well, this is the only Klee figure in the market at the moment. You don't have a choice. So it is entirely up to you whether you can accept the flaws present on this figure. But there is also a 50-50 chance in the international market version, the second batch, that these problems might be fixed. So we shall wait and see. Would you take a wait and see approach or would you just pre-order her anyway because you want one? Do let me know down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this review and I shall see you guys again soon. Goodbye.